Okay. It is a Zach Sang show. Sadly, Heather is missing, but Dan is here. Oh, hooray. And Connor France is here. Uh, Come on. Look at that applause. I live. I live. Yes. Look at that. <laughs> Note to Self is a brand new book, and I kind of stole it from you when you walked in with it. Mm, yeah, you were attracted to it. It's beautiful. Thank you it, so much. <laughs> I, I mean, let, let's talk about the process of creating this, because this doesn't just appear. Like No. I was talking to my little brother about it last night. I, went, I go on walks at night, and then I usually call like a family member per night. Um, and last night was my little brother's night. Well, why are walks like the best time to catch up with family members? I can't stand still, first of all. Yeah. So second of all, I just figured I might as well exercise while I'm doing it. But <laughs> do you, you really think that it's exercise? I, yeah. I walk like five miles when I do it. I talk wow. to them for like an hour. <laughs> I do the same thing, but then I have to convince my friends that I'm actually exercising because they think it's all bull squash. But anyway, you were talking to your brother about the book. Yes. So, uh, a lot goes into, if, if you are like me, I, I'm really, I have like an eye for design. So down to the, the fonts, the photo, the t thickness of the paper, the texture of the cover, I, you know, handpicked all of that. Everything, uh, so, you thought of everything. Yeah. And then obviously I wrote the book as well. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, a lot goes into it. Uh, and I wanted to make sure the, the book was as pretty as the words on the inside. So, so, when you start a book like this. <laughs> What, where do you start? How do you start? There's, this one actually was different from my first one. This one I started accidentally. I um, It's called Note to Self because essentially the notes inside the essays and the poetry were all written for myself. Uh, mm -hmm. It was just like me typing out notes along the past like 16 months of my life and writing essays. And then all of a sudden I realized that I kind of had written like half a book in my notes on my phone. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. So and then like I, a journal? Yeah, in a weird way. Um, but I expanded on it, so it's okay. more, there's a lot more depth to it than the notes on my phone. And are you taking these notes as the day's going, or are you like living your day, going home, and taking an hour and processing As everything? it's going. There, okay. There, yeah, there are frequent times where I would just like stop what I was doing quickly and then start typing something out. Even like during a movie, I would like quickly get out my phone just to like type something down that inspired me from the movie and then I'd reflect on it later. And that could be heavy. I mean, when you're going back on those thoughts, like that's it's, a lot to like, that's a lot to go through and si sift through. Yeah. It's funny to look back at it now. Cause I was so angsty 12 months ago, or I was so like uh, emotional eight months ago or super happy six months. Like it's really interesting to look back cause all the dates and times are there and half of them aren't edited. Um, and just Ooh. to see what I was like <laughs> at certain periods over the past 18 months. And are you using a ghostwriter here or is no, it just you? I, it's just me. From the from the first book to this one, I was like, if I'm going to do a book, I really want to do it myself. H how are you getting the motivation to sit down and like type this <laughs> out? Like, th Is that challenging? Uh, once, as soon as I signed on to do the book and it was official that I was writing a book, it at times would feel like schoolwork because you have deadlines. Like you yeah. have you have certain things you have to meet at certain times. So I had to remind myself that it was fun and it was supposed to be creative, but like with m dates in your calendar, you're like, oh, this feels like school. Yeah, you're I'm, adding stress to the whole thing. Yeah, I'm like, I'm out of school, but I feel like I'm in school again. <laughs> and then there's none, none of the good things that come with school. Yeah. Other true. people. Yeah. It's just you alone <laughs> in your house. I know. <laughs> like figuring it out. And there's no guidelines. Like you can do whatever you want, which is great, but I'm also a little bit type A, so I kind of need- You need something. Yeah, I, um, I, hi I did hire, so I have um, every, author has editors, so I have uh -huh. an editor at Simon Schuster, but I hired a special one here to basically just tell, like keep me in check. Yeah. <laughs> he was pretty much my mom being like, have you done another chapter today? I'm like, yes, Steve, I'm working on it. <laughs> so well, how long did it take to put this whole book together from start to finish? Uh, about 16 months. Wow. That's yeah, a long it's, time. But it's also really quick uh, for books. <laughs> and what's wow. the hardest part about it? Writing. <laughs> writing it. Yeah, well, uh, duh. Yeah. I don't know, maybe <laughs> loving no, writing no, no. to maybe paper. The, maybe the writing came easier and the no, design I was get harder. You. I get you. Um, I definitely spent a lot of time on the design, but definitely just, just writing and getting the words on, on paper. And more so expanding on things is difficult because yeah. um, it's kind of hard. The book is 312 pages or something. Wow. It's hard to expand on thoughts that you have beyond like two pages. Mm -hmm. And I always found that difficult in school too, that to get beyond like, 500 words. Then why go so long? Why go 300 that's, pages? Uh, that's true. I know it wasn't the 300 pages, more just like the individual topics. So a okay. lot of the topics are only five to max 10 pages, but they're only, a lot of them are like five pages. If you could tell the story in 
three pages or two pages. Yeah, exactly. As opposed to ten. Exactly. And that's what I had a battle with my editors because they're like, you should really expand here. I'm like, but there's nothing to expand yeah. on. That is it. That but is. I, but I also feel like that's the millennial generation a little bit. It is. We're 100%. used to 150 characters. And also, I know obviously the stories firsthand. So sometimes I forget that people don't know certain mm. details or they don't know the thought process leading up to it. And I have to simplify it. It's like when you. If you build, if you're a carpenter, you just forget that people don't know wh- how to <laughs> hammer nails into wood because um, do. they don't do it themselves. Yeah, you, they just do it. So you have to remind, you have to remember to. This is the weirdest analogy in the <laughs> world. <laughs> you have to remember that people don't know how to do that, so you have to expand on it. Which came easier, writing or design for this book? Um, hmm. they both were pretty easy. I mean, like, they both flowed out in a different way than the first one. The first one was way more reflective and you had to I had to look back it was a memoir so I had to look back essentially on my my 22 years of existence at the time uh so that was a little bit difficult to kind of which by the way like past. that's a weird thing to do at 22 isn't it hilarious but, I mean like it's ironic and I also like uh, the first chapter kind of pokes fun at me for doing that but I also feel like very therapeutic and kind of helps you move on for the future 100 and I also wrote it at that time because I figure 16 to kind of Probably like 25, 24. Those are the most influential years of your entire life. So I felt like that was important to me personally. Spot on. Yeah, to reflect on. And I think a lot of the people who would think, you know, writing a memoir at 22 is ridiculous are the people who just go, you're young. You haven't, you haven't seen anything yet. I'm like, no, I haven't, I haven't seen anything. I say that in the book. (laughs) But, But I also think like what you said, we're sponges at that age. Mm. A lot of things that are happening to us, you know, before the age of 22 are things and traits that kind of stick with us forever. 100%. Yeah. So you you figure out who you are or at least like the shell of who you are. And then you fit, at least from my opinion, you fill it in as you go. No, definitely. And I may not know, I may not know the final answer, but I know steps one through three and there's an infinite amount of steps to get to that final answer. But I, it's important to get to steps one through three. Beautifully said. Wait, so is kind the book... <laughs> little choppily said. <laughs> is the book personal stories, fiction st- Like, what exactly personal. is... Personal. It's all personal. It's all personal. There are... Um, so there's a lot of poetry in it, which I've never... I always... I tweet poetry pretty frequently. I just enjoy alliteration and wordplay and internal rhyme. Um, kind of like, I'm assuming, what it's like to be a musician uh, without vocals. <laughs> so I, I wanted to kind of put that in there. So some of those stories, the po- poetry is kind of fictional at okay. times. Or meta, a very metaphorical. <laughs> cool. And uh, when it's really, it's 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 such a, like a I consider it truly an art piece. I really thought about it as like a conceptual, interesting approach to a book. What'd you learn about yourself while writing this book? Oh God, too many things. I, yeah. <laughs> Take a sip of water, bro. <laughs> yeah, I know. So I'm like, uh, gotta gotta go. Actually, what time is this interview done? <laughs> um, no, I mean, I wrote it. I wrote it in like a really emotional. 16 months of my life. Um, I was going through like a huge breakup. Uh, I was going through kind of a depressive period that I realized that I had depression previous, but it was only until this period that I realized that it was depression and not sadness. So it was a really like up and down time. What was the difference between normal sadness and depression? What was more that I realized that because I was diagnosed. um, So I realized that I had been through this before and that it wasn't just like a one-time thing. I was like, oh, I've experienced this before. I've experienced this in freshman year in college when I was deeply in the closet and just like really sad or what I thought was really sad at the time. But it was more than that. It followed you kind of like a shadow versus just, just you know, like being sad and then getting yeah, over no. it. It was kind of a thing that happened for extended periods of time. When it hit, it would hit for like a month. When you were a freshman and you were hiding your sexuality at the time, yeah, what lengths did you go to? God, I'm, I mean, dating girls. That was a huge, like, <laughs> I mean, that's a big faking one. Faking it, yeah, faking it. No, yeah, I'm, uh, yeah. <laughs> you faked it? Not even really faked it. I mean, because, because, so have you heard of the Kinsley scale? Uh, Is it the Kinsley scale? Correct. I think that's the name. Uh, of it. No, I didn't. It's me. the. Oh God, I think it's the Kinsley scale. I don't know. why I haven't talked about. This Somebody so Google it. So it's the um, it's the scale of sexuality. One uh being mm-hmm. one being uh homosexual or heterosexual, and then mm-hmm. a six being homosexual and a three being bisexual and it kind of shows where you fall on the scale so some people who identify as homosexual can be like i'm up it's a fiction it's a fictional scale it's not a real thing but you can be like i identify as a five because i i definitely could see my like i would enjoy making out with a girl okay you know what i mean got it got it got it yeah yeah. or versus someone who's a six is like no i don't want anything to do with girls if if they're a gay man (laughs) 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 i was like there are so many different things i'm going for here and you realize this scale where were you 
Uh, I think I, I still think I'm like a five. Like I, if I made out with a girl, I would thoroughly enjoy it. But do I want to be in a relationship with a girl? No. So it wasn't faking it in that sense. I definitely enjoyed m relationships with girls, but it was after a while I realized that there's no way this could be permanent. It couldn't be real. Yeah. yeah. It was just, it was, I was lying to myself. I was hiding it. So like that gets to you after a while. Cause it's almost like the more you do it, the more you're hoping that you'll trick yourself into thinking you're something you're not. So in my case, straight, I was just like, the more I do it, the more I'll figure out that I actually am straight and I like girls. And then if you fail at it and you realize you're, you break up with a girl and you realize you're not straight, then it, it kind of hits you really hard. You're because you get sad about it because yeah. you it's a secret that you've been keeping for so long. Does this make any? No, sense? I'm processing all of it. Yeah, I'm like, it makes make a lot sense? of sense. Yeah, yeah so no, it's 100%. like a, yeah, it's like you're building yourself up to wanting something that you don't know why you want it. In my case, being straight, and then when you fail at it, it hits you even harder. Yeah, because you had your, your you had your sights set on something. Yeah, and there it, was a goal there. Yeah, I mean, like, and of course, in hindsight, I'm like, I would never want to be straight. Gross. No offense to anybody in <laughs> What's here. What's wrong with being straight? <laughs> I don't, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's a long list, yeah? Yeah, there's a long list. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I just personally, I'm like, I, I love being gay. So uh, it was just a thing at the time, I think, going through it. And I love that uh, look in hindsight. And that's kind of why I like my first book a lot because I really, it was during the heat of that. It was I started writing it like six months after I came out publicly. So it was a really influential wow. time in my life. Yeah. yeah. I mean, a hot moment. Very, yeah. A lot of shit going on. Mm. So when you were young and growing up, would you like watch cartoons and wonder why you thought the male cartoons were hotter? I've only thought about this recently, to, to be honest. is more that I was like, I'm sexually attracted to cartoons. That's what I thought about recently. Um, Which is a real thing, by the way. It is. It and ruined I, my friend Paul's life. Eh, what? Yeah. <laughs> Elaborate a little bit. A little early on in life, he was in, obsessed and in love with anime cartoons. Yes. And like, that's all he was into. And you know he would <laughs> to it and whatever, and he's he, and at that time when what you're his young, name? his name was Paul. Paul, I need to meet Paul. Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, at that time, you know, you, you're figuring it out, and it's you're impressionable, yeah. even more impressionable than you are at 18, pretty much. 100, percent yeah. So he's <laughs> to these girls, and like he, <laughs> the standards are so high in the cartoon world, yeah, that like when it's time to perform around a real woman, and you realize it's not an anime Japanese chick, yeah. with these perfectly glossy boobies, it's hard to. It's hard to perform. Glossy boobies, love that. But yeah, um, but yeah, that's, cartoon sexuality hurt him. <laughs> no, I get you. Anyway, I, get you. I mean, wait, that's wait. a whole. Yeah, I was like, that's a whole problem with apparently porn and psychology. Or psychology. So that's psychological. I don't. Either way, um, or that's what they say. There've been a lot of studies for that. Not that I think it's a problem. But um, <laughs> if you're gonna love cartoons, love cartoons. Go for anyway, it. Did you love find anything. any sexy? Love that pillow. Love this couch. You can love it. Any. I mean, you're right. A lot. You could yeah, love couple, physically anything. A, yeah, there's a couple of things maybe you shouldn't. But you oh, know. Yeah. <laughs> Um, cars, don't do that. Where were we? Oh, you were talking about cartoons and the males. Oh, yes. No, um, me just realizing I, <laughs> me realizing I was attracted to this couch. That's right. <laughs> Thank God. Uh, no, yeah, I realized it kind of recently that, um, there were moments, not even just like cartoons, but more so, uh, characters in television shows, even friends that I had that I thought I liked them because I thought they were really cool and I was like, oh, they're really cool. I want to be their friends. But I want to be them. Were but I was them. no, I was like, yeah, they're not really cool. I want to date them. I want to <laughs> kiss them. I want more than that. And I didn't realize it until now that that was, I guess, something I just repressed or whatever. But now I'm like, oh my God. Yeah, how'd you get <laughs> There's back? There's so many. <laughs> <laughs> how'd so you get many. back to that? Because I, I've had those moments, right, where you, you just have like epiphany. Yeah, you look yeah. back and you analyze for a second and you're like, oh, wow, that's what that really meant. Or I re actually should have done this there. Hey, yeah. Regardless. Or just I see some what, like a YouTube video where someone was like, "Yeah, I was totally sexually attracted to who's like a, a hot cartoon male uh, cartoon Hercules Archer." Hercules. I was or, totally or, or, say Arthur Hercules. Archer. Arthur the Aardvark is not sexually. What about attracted. like what about the Fox and Robin Hood? I oh. used to think he was uh, so yeah. hot. More, I thought he was more adorable than hot. No, I thought he was hot. The uh, Fox and Robin Hood. Yeah, it was Are we like, thinking of the same one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But may, oh no, it was. I'm thinking about Peter Pan. They wore the same outfit, kind of. No, I was thinking. Yeah, like the Peter male, Pan was pretty hot. I was like, can you guys flash? things on the screen um, <laughs> just behind you <laughs> I was like box <laughs> put them right here <laughs> um, <laughs> Jesus Christ uh, it all comes so, so out you, on Zach's show yeah thank you for coming in by the way yeah, no yeah much appreciated no no problem um, what were we talking about you, you're into the cartoon you're into the Fox, <laughs> into the Fox. we've talked about a lot of things I mean, you yeah. are going on tour now with a book. You're going on tour soon, right? I am. Yeah, I just announced that recently. So I'm doing something a little bit. I'm doing what I did for the last book, like a traditional signing tour where I go to cities and I sign books, but then I also take photos with people. So it's all based around just signing books. Um, but uh, then I'm also doing uh, another level.
level type deal here. Yeah, like a bus tour. I um I kind of wanted to do something different, so I'm doing a bus tour to 18 different cities. But it's the kind of unique part of it is that I'm turning the book into a, an installation, a physical installation. So we we rented a semi truck, and I have a company that's not cutting it up literally, but it's putting three rooms inside of it. And people will walk into the semi truck through room one, two, three, and then walk out. And each one kind of depicts a different portion of the book. And they have like images from the book, sounds that I describe in the book. It's 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 interesting. It's kind of a, a unique thing. So it's a traveling art exhibit that people will go through when they go on the tour. It's so not anything Dan would ever go see. That's not true. I went to art school. I like this type of stuff. <laughs> but I've seen the renderings, which I, you showcased the renderings, right? Or, or no? I have. Maybe they were in an email or something. Oh, I've seen them. Okay, they're, and they're cool. Amazing. Yeah. Well, they, they, there's never they, been a book tour like this. Yeah. I think I, you're downplaying it a little bit here. I gotta hard, sell this to, thing for well, you. Yeah, I know. It's hard to explain. So like the first room depicts kind of the uh, it in fix in in pick it's, it depicts kind of a sense of uh fantasy happiness lightness and there's going to be i can't even describe what's in the room because i don't want to spoil it for anybody but it's going to be uh there are gonna be images from it very bright very floral like actual scents in the room the second one's going to be more of like a dark depressive period with uh interesting lighting and interesting vocals and sounds and then the last one is kind of like a rebirthing moment and it's going to be very infinite feeling. I'm trying to, how, to, how do I describe this without, so, because I don't want to ruin it for anyone. I want everyone to go into it not knowing what they're going to experience. So it's like an art show on wheels. Yes. But and do you need to read the book to understand? No. Okay. Yes. <laughs> is that, it reflective of you? It is um, in, in many ways, but also like metaphorically in a way, because I wanted it to be, like a lot of the things I do, I want it to be something that anyone can enjoy, whether they know me or not. So this book, a lot of the stories are personal, but it's never like Remember YouTube 2016? <laughs> the month was August? Like, it's nothing like that. Uh, you can pick it up and you'd maybe relate just to the stories and the words behind you, you know what I mean? But w <laughs> what are the three rooms in the semi? Like, what do they represent? I mean, I know th they're all like, I mean, florals and darkness and yes. rebirth. Is that you? Is that you coming to terms that like, is, with becoming a new version of you or uh, learning from yourself and then, you know, being, yeah? Yes. Okay. You're killing it. Yes. Got yeah. it. Nail, right on the head. Back to carpent carpentering. Nail on the head. Yeah. You nailed that. <laughs> full um, circle. <laughs> full circle moment. There's a chapter called Full Circle. Uh, yeah, it kind of is. It, it definitely is that. It's it's very broad, but there are like actual visuals from the book will be in the trailer. Actual scenes described will be in the trailer. Uh, my voice will be in the trailer again. So it, it brings the book to life in the most vague way possible because it is only a 10 minute experience. What started this book and what started like your this emotional journey you went on to write it? Was it your breakup? It was it was before that though cuz I so a lot of the photographs were actually from August 2000 it's they started in August 2015 um cuz I like to take photos and I, I kind of keep them. I don't post a lot of them online, although I do post a lot. A ton. Yeah. But they're beautiful. I but, can only imagine what's left. Thank you. Yeah. And those are, those are, none of those have really been posted. So the, um, I started there and then I just started kind of really getting into poetry over the past around that time as well. So that's kind of where it all started. And then once um, other things happened in my life, that's where it kind of really, really became cathartic to me. And I started doing it more out of necessity Okay. For my well-being yeah, in a weird your way. your mental health. But, yeah, but totally unintentionally. It was never like, I need to write poetry to not be sad. It just so happened that that's how I dealt with things. So w why poetry? Like, what struck in you that you're like, okay, these are ideas I have in my head and I'm going to take it to paper? I don't know. I think, I mean, I think one thing I enjoy about poetry is that it requires more thought than just writing down an essay. You, for, because there's a lot of wordplay in mind, a lot of alliteration and internal rhyme. So it requires you to tell a story in a concise way, but also in a creative way. It, it just takes longer, if that makes yeah. sense. I don't know. I mean, I'm like, why do you like radio? <laughs> I <don't> no, <laughs> it makes sense. I, I, yeah, I don't know. It's fun to me. It's challenging. And it's a, it's interesting to tell us, tell us some, tell something, not necessarily a story, to tell, set a scene or a sentence and to say it in a way that no one's ever said it before. Yeah. If that makes sense? No, 100%. The best way I always describe it is, uh, so Lord's first album, mm -hmm. I, I, adore that girl because of her way of describing things and the one line that comes to mind is the veins of my city the way she said the veins of my city and that's just her referring to streets and that for some reason ever since i've heard that lyric and then the rest of her music i've seen 
or I've listened to music in a different way and I've read literature in a different way. And once you said veins of the city, I literally visualized, I, 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 like the visual in my head was immediate. Yeah. You know, you, I, it was weird. It was, and it, it, yeah. it, it makes sense to anyone um, who hears it, but it's just a different way of saying it. No one would say that out loud, I guess, yeah. or the typical person wouldn't. So yeah, I just, I found it, I find it fun to try and capture that tone in poetry. Did you become a better person after your breakup? I think so. I think. Well, I, th I don't know about a better person. I think I became a different person because uh, you kind of you learn to you learn to go through life in a different way. I guess you learn to grow up. You learn to be an individual. You learn how to handle uh, deeply emotional experiences. You kind of find yourself in a different way. I don't know. It's almost like you're like leveling up as a person. Yeah. Very much growing up quickly, whether you want it or not. If that makes sense. And most of the time, it's kind of necessary to move on. Like, I think I mean, so, yeah. Right? Yeah, in hindsight, things like that are totally necessary. I get I get why all music is about love and breakups. Like, I get why, because it's, it's no one can quite capture it right, because it's different for every person. Everyone, like, has experienced it, but everyone has experienced it in a different way. I get it. Different, but the same at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it's relatable, but each experience is different. You love music. I do. You have really, a label. Really love music. I do. <laughs> really? Like, yeah, yeah, he has a label. Hello. It's an alternative label. <laughs> it's well, explain. I've heard it be explained to me many times. Yes. You explain how your label functions. Yes. So the label functions as a way to connect social influencers with up and coming musicians. Uh, one of the things that I enjoy is, or I think that a lot of people enjoy, is finding a song that no one else has heard before. Mm -hmm. Um. And me having a platform, usually when I find a song that no one else has heard before, I want everyone else to hear it, so I'll tweet about it. Uh, so we kind of came up, me, my uh, my manager, and one of our friends uh, came up with this concept for a record label that would be connecting social influencers with up-and-coming musicians. What up-and-coming mu musicians need, they need a platform. We'll give them that platform. So we have social influencers kind of compiling songs on a compilation and then pitching it to their audience because they're... Usually uh, YouTube audiences and social audiences just want to connect. And what a better way to connect than music. 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and then it's hopefully, great music too. Yeah. I, I, I think it's the best. I mean, it's something I would do anyway. So why not do it this way, I guess. Share a playlist. Yeah. And also um, it's it can totally spin into a traditional record label. I mean, we we are partnered with Sony Red now. So we have a lot of funding through them. So cool. we, um, we have three, four employees now. Like it's, wow. it's become, it's become a business. It's Dude. kind of awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to start singing soon, putting out music? No, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> when was, uh, when was the first time you put on lipstick? Lipstick. Oh my God. Are we going to talk about this? Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, I was on, I'm on the cover of uh, gay times magazine right now. Like you look like a firefighter. <laughs> no, that's, that's what I thought too. When they did it, I was like, I look like a fight. Cause I, they were also like greasing me up and I'm like, this is so <laughs> not me, but I have to do it. Cause this is what they want. Um, I was like, sure. I, get, I get what it, I have to be greased I, up. I do. Like they, they were like, you have to do a picture this way. And it, cause it's like the magazine's theme. I was like, fine, but we'll also do some my way. Um, whose choice was lipstick? The lipstick was mine, but it was the more greasy fireman look that was not mine. <laughs> um, yeah, no, the lipstick was fun. Every time I go into a photo shoot or anything that's kind of creatively visually driven, I always tell, I'm like, like do something I've never been done, do something that's never been done for me before. Push me, break gender barriers, uh, make me wear makeup, make me wear a dress, whatever it is that like I haven't done before, make me do it just because I think it's interesting to kind of push those boundaries for society but also for me as a person i think it makes me after wearing lipstick for you, that shoot you I, learned something about yourself i right? felt so free i i made a video about it saying like i felt sexy and i felt confident and i don't know i think it was just because i did something i hadn't done before and i owned it and i wasn't afraid of it and you, now i will never be afraid of it ever again you look good in it thank you it was so a good look much Very is it something nice. that you want to start wearing more often no see and that was a i don't i mean like i i would but it's it's i don't think i would wear lipstick on, on a daily basis but i definitely would wear it for certain things now because now i know what it feels like now i know what i look like in it was that um, the first time you put it on ever no i think i had worn it once with are you familiar with zoe sug zoella on youtube okay yeah. yeah i think she put it on me once i believe oh like it's a, like a bit i think yeah. Well, yeah if i remember right me and a couple friends were at her place in um where she lives in england and i think we all basically did drag that night like we all she just like <laughs> She's a, a big beauty guru on YouTube, okay. and I think she just put us all in drag, and she found it really fun, and we all found it fun too. What did Dad say about the lipstick? I don't. I don't think my dad's commented on it, but I commented on it yet. But at the same time, he's seen he's seen so many things. He's great. Yeah. <laughs> Man, you ever try walking in heels? 
I have. It's oh, so hard. So I have difficult. so much. Res- yeah, I have so much respect. Um, yeah. Have you, Dan? Have well, you? I mean, you ever just like see a heel like your friends or your moms? And you just kind of try to slip it on and walk around. No, it's difficult. Feels like on a balancing beam. Yeah, it's difficult. I, I mean, yeah, I can get into heels. It's fun. <laughs> I'm like, why not? I don't know. It's, I was like, at the end of the day, it's a stilt. Like, why is it feminine? Your fashion week look was very good. Thank like you with so the much. wide pants, thank is you. Nice. Yeah, I've been so into like experimenting with fashion. It's been so fun. You, like my favorite part of my day. W- you have a fashion line, a clothing line, common culture. I do. Un- coincidentally, I tried on like three jackets before I got here. I was like, I'll just wear the common culture one. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I've been that's kind nice. of experimenting in clothing and trying to like that's where my passion lies at the moment is is in fashion and clothing and uh, photography. So. I've been kind of doing that with my my brand, Common Culture. Okay, so yes. is that priority number one? At the moment, with it, passion? It's, it's accidentally become priority number one. I think in my head, just because it's the most fun I have when I work, Yeah, it doesn't feel like work. I get super ex- When I got invited to go to the Calvin Klein show, I actually like was shaking with it's excitement. I thought it was so cool. It was awesome. What I met it- Raph Simmons, who was the designer Ooh. for Calvin Klein. I was like... <gasps> <laughs> I actually couldn't talk to him. I was so scared. <laughs> I mean, that's like a new territory for you. Yeah, You're it is. You're obviously nervous. Are yeah. you soaking in knowledge from those around you? Yes, totally. Trying to make friends? Yes, definitely. And uh, I find it, again, being fun. It's something that's fun to learn about. I wish that I, uh, if I went to school right now, I think I would thoroughly enjoy learning fashion history and learning about the the you know past fashions, the periods of fashion, the past designers, um, even just art in general. Because a lot of people are inspired by art for fashion. You have said you were upset that you didn't finish college. I Yeah, I am, but I'm not. Like, I, I wouldn't be where I am if I finished college, for sure. It would have taken up so much time because it's difficult. Of course. But um, it would have been nice to have a degree. It would have been nice to finish out my experience. I had, so, I had so many friends in college. Like, I had to leave them behind to move out here. So that's... The exp- I miss the experience more than, I guess, getting the diploma. Would you say that was one of the hardest decisions you've ever made? Yes, for sure. It was really, really difficult because it, it was a group decision. It was a family. Like, I, my parents were helping me pay, pay for me through school. I had so many friends. Like, it was, a, it was a group decision at the time. It wasn't just me that it was going to yeah. affect. What do you think you need a degree for? I don't... That you haven't accomplished yet. I think, I mean, if I wanted to get a degree, I think I could use it for many things. I think I would actually go back for something completely different than what I was going for because I was going for a business and art degree, which to be honest, you (laughs) half the time don't really need um, for either of them. I would go back for something. I I always ask this question. I actually want to propose it to you guys. If you could go back to school, no strings attached, it wouldn't, if if it was just like a period in time, like freeze time, Mm -hmm. go back to school, come back to the exact moment, no money, no time lost, nothing. What subject would you want to learn? What subject would you in present day wish you paid more attention to in school? If I ended up going to college. And it could be anything, by the way. It doesn't have to be science. Well, if I, I would be, I would like to major in journalism, minor in political uh, science. Awesome. Both combined and still end up here. Awesome. Hopefully. Yes. If that's, if that was the case. That is the case. Yes. That'd be ideal. Just like knowledge you wish you had right yeah. now. And also need, right? Yes. Because I'm at a place right now where if you look towards the future, Maybe I do need a degree to achieve some of the goals that I want to yeah. hit. You know, what do you think? Some foreign language. Okay, you feel that? I can't even. Other than Ola, I can't speak anything. And like, <laughs> I just feel like it'd be Ola. cool to be able to speak another language. <laughs> no, I get that. So I feel I, that. I wish I paid attention in Spanish more. Yeah, I still kind of re- retained a lot of my Spanish. I took, I think, six years of Spanish. That's a long time. Yeah, high school. I took four years in high school and two years in college. Would you so. like talk to anybody in high, from high school ever? Mm, high school, I have, okay, so we have, uh, by the way, I would learn history. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was going to ask yeah, you. I, what you I would history. learn history, and I don't know, I feel like history has become such an important part in today's society that I'm really annoyed at myself that mm-hmm. I never took it seriously. But, okay. Or was never even presented as serious at the time by even the teachers or the professors. 100%. Because yeah. 99% of society and humanity forget history. They yes. live in the now, and that's all they focus on. Yes. If more people took the time to study history, I don't think we'd be where we're at right now yep. because anybody can look at the baseline of the last 150 years and understand what we f***ed up on yep. and how to get better moving forward, Yep. honestly. I know, and I, I would just find it thoroughly interesting, not even U.S. history, but world oh, history in general. I, world. I, yeah, and it's something that comes up on the daily, which I think people don't. 
think it will, but it really, especially again in today's right now, and yeah, in 2017, it comes up every single day. And the other thing too, people forget is that like American history is all that matters. Like, no, dude, no, you know, m- a majority of what actually happens and what has shaped society today, yeah. has happened outside of the United States. That's the problem with America. We think we're the only ones that are important. <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally. <laughs> Do you want to run for like no. government one day? No, I could never. I uh, you gonna leave it to Tyler Oakley? Yeah, I'll no, I'll leave it to Raymond Braun. Yeah, are you familiar with Raymond Braun? Yeah, yeah, Raymond Braun for sure. You don't think Tyler Oak- Oakley's gonna run? I he might run for some form of I think local. I don't think he would ever go more than not local, Every, but like state. I think he. I don't think he would go outside of that. But I, yeah, I would vote for Tyler. I for mean, sure. state is pretty good. Like senator. Oh yeah, congressman. No, it's amazing. I just don't think he would ever like Raymond. I want to run for president. Okay. I want. He's one of the most intelligent, switched-on people that I know. I, I I would vote for him in a sec. I'd vote for him. I don't know him as well, so I'm not going to endorse him. I'm going to check him out first. I would endorse I was Tyler like, Oakley, though. Flag. Get me a pride flag. Yeah. <laughs> Are you guys I, even friends? Wasn't there? Aren't you guys not friends? <laughs> it's so interesting. Tyler and I had a falling out for a literal like exactly year. Um, and then we like became and so yeah we're friends now okay, yeah we cool. had a falling out for like a year what was the falling out cause <laughs> oh that's a story for another show <laughs> <laughs> hey moving I, forward in life you realize how stupid some drama is it's so stupid I yeah like, there's no point in it there's are, seriously are, like yeah are there's, you competitive anymore I'm so f***ing competitive <laughs> I am so <laughs> Competitive. I am the most competitive. I'm so competitive that when I go to Soul Cycle classes, not Soul Cycle classes. Uh, are you familiar with Flywheel? Yes. No. Flywheel is the it's Soul Cycle, but it has a speedometer, and they put the the speeds up on a, a TV screen. I'm the type of guy that when I go to those Flywheel classes, I want to f-ing win. Like I want to beat everyone in that room, and I do. Why? I don't know. I mean, you've achieved a lot. You, a certain you know? level of gratitude at 8 a.m. <laughs> you <laughs> have, I, so that I can eat more later. <laughs> I mean, I guess. Or are you competing with those around you? You have nothing to prove to them. This is true. I, I just want to win. I don't know why. It's just, I think it's because I was such a competitive kid because I was in so many athletic things that it's just literally in my roots to want to win for no reason. Were you, it's not like I win and I'm like, F- you. It's not, <laughs> nothing like that. It's more just I win and I feel like satisfaction from it. Were you forced to do sports when you were younger? <laughs> no, although it is a slight debate. <laughs> okay. Because when I was uh, 10 or 11, I started swim team and I, I did that for 10 years. Um, but I, when I started, I was going through my... My husky phase, as my parents call it. Um, <laughs> That's a nice way of putting it. My husky phase. My parents called me a fat ass. Oh, shame. yeah. It's w- whatever. Weren't we all? I wanted to make a club called the Former Fat Kids Club, but uh, I don't. I think that's problematic. Now. Yeah, well, I yeah. I think it's problematic. Um, <laughs> I was like, I take that back. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, no, but I I was husky growing up, and I uh, and I had like like twig siblings, like everyone. But for some reason, I was the one that had you know a little bit of weight issues growing up. And I, my mom put me in swim team, and I still to this day, I'm like, you put me in there because you wanted me to lose weight. But <laughs> she doesn't admit that. But also, it was the best decision of my life because I, my, my friends, going back to your question from like 10 minutes ago, the only friends I really talked to in high school are my swim team friends. That's cool. Yeah. We were the carpool because we would carpool because we, we had to go over to Wisconsin from Minnesota for our swim team. So we would all get in a car and carpool over to swim practice every single day. And you all wanted to win together. Yeah. And you needed each yeah. other to do it. And we were all just like kind of weird outcasts. <laughs> <laughs> on the so, swim team. Yeah, it was very breakfast club. See, the swim team on my sco- at my school, they were cool kids. Like they were the hottest people. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. We didn't have a high <laughs> take a I was friends. like, thank you so much. You know, <laughs> high school me is shivering. Um, we, we didn't have a high school swim team. We were such a small high school, but we we did the YMCA swim team. Ah. The YMCA. The YMCA, even, what's even good? Even cooler. <laughs> we were cool. I loved my swim team friends. Did, were you a Speedo person? Like, you would do that? I grew into wearing Speedos, I think, because I was so self-conscious because, like, when you when you have something you don't like about yourself, even, even after you, you know, get over that insecurity or fix that insecurity mm-hmm. if you feel like it needs fixing— um, it still sticks with you for a really long time. Of I think course. I still am like weight conscious purely because I it was something in my childhood. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I, you're just I like, get oh, it. Even if it's, you're just aware of it. Well, so you were conscious of your weight in a Speedo, nothing else? Not the see, bulge? See, no. I'd be con- <laughs> <laughs> Wow, I don't know somebody's what, confident. I, no, I mean, just like, I, 
I, yeah, who cares? You I know, Amber know. Rose once told us that small penises are just fine. Oh, Amber, is she, was she in here before? No, we met her somewhere else. Like, did she sit here? <laughs> she said penis you size know. doesn't matter. Like, you would know what does that mean? <laughs> I don't want to, <laughs> I'm going to end there. Um, no, it, yeah, I think it was just like a, because it's like the most exposed you can be wearing a Speedo, especially like yeah, a swim a team Speedo because they're so freaking tight. Mm. So as somebody that puts you, their whole you, was that an mm, by the way mm. <laughs> <laughs> as somebody that puts their whole entire life on the internet you talk about everything why do you not like to publicly address who you're dating and what's going on and who you've dated that's the one so not even just like relationships it's more I mean it is relationships so it's it's romantic and platonic relationships I have grown over the past because I've been on YouTube for six years mm -hmm. like I I've been around the block for the internet mm. um I just realized that those are those are things that it doesn't help to bring other people into relationships. Relationships are traditionally between two people. Uh, from like family and friend reasons, I'm like, they didn't ask for this lifestyle. They don't, you know, people on the internet are mean. I don't want them to like, you know, pick apart my family or something. I see it happen all the time. So uh, I just decide, I'm like, keep that to myself. Like I want to keep one thing to myself. It's relationships. You deserve, whatever, yeah. You whatever form something. they come in. Yeah. So are the people you did collaboration videos with over the years fake friends? No, no, Real I friends? actually, I only collaborate on YouTube with people that I am friends with or like as pe as individuals. Mostly usually have hung out with several times before. Got it. Yeah. I, yeah, I, cause I, I have people, you know, ask or I've had people ask to collab at times and I'm like, I don't, I don't know you. Like, I don't know what our chemistry will be. Mm -hmm. What yeah. if it goes really bad? <laughs> people do that. Like, that's a thing though. Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, it's like how it you happens. Get famous. Yeah. I mean, it happens in all industries too. People collab and I mean, like it happens again to reference the music industry. People who collab on songs, they don't even meet half the time. <laughs> they like, yeah, they don't. They, it's not, it's not always a thing. <laughs> it's a it's business transaction. It's yeah, it's work as much as it's romanticized. I'm going to send you this track. You bring me back what you got. Maybe I'll give you some notes or maybe you'll hear it on the radio in a couple yeah. Months. And like, that's just it, I guess. What do you think of Instagram stars? People who do those, you know, Instagram. videos and they, the, they do, you know, the, I don't know. I can't describe Instagram them. Models. But you know what that I'm talking like, about. That was like how my mom describes Instagram stars. They do that. They, you know, they do the thing yeah. on the, on the platform. They upload the photo. <laughs> but it, like they do the videos like they that, do, that they think are relatable that everybody else goes through. Oh, you're attracted to that guy over there and not your boyfriend. I'm going to so, slap you. It's so interesting to be totally transparent because so Vine died um, yeah. and Vine culture kind of got really gross after a while it didn't start out that way but it truly got like after a while it got really racist and homophobic mm -hmm. and on certain parts of vine on a lot of parts of vine and i feel like it's kind of trickling over uh, actually even more so than that like misogynistic it's trickling over into instagram um because of instagram video and i don't think i enjoy it that much half of the comedy I see in on Instagram or in Instagram videos is not at all funny in fact yes. in fact half of it is very uh, sexual assaulty yeah. uh, misogynistic <laughs> judging people based upon their like it's all really weird when you really watch some of those videos I'm like that's not okay Hey. It's not, and everybody looks like they're on cocaine. Yeah, well, I mean, well, all that's a different problem, <laughs> honey. <laughs> they're just not. They're not funny. I agree with you on that. I watch they're a lot of these videos. And I'm like, oh, I must have missed something. They're not funny at all. It, the um, energy is. Yeah, well, small. it's like I kind of get it. I mean, there's a market for everything, but when you really watch it, I'm like, how does this have like 10 million views? It's really <laughs> bad. And the people <laughs> who vlog, because a lot of them do the same. You know, the Instagram stars are now the vloggers on the YouTube doing the 19, 28 <laughs> the minute stars, videos. Instagram stars, the YouTube, <laughs> mom, get out. <laughs> Sorry, I'll excuse no, you're myself. No, yeah, and, and like, that's fine. I mean, people have, people people do their own thing. I can't, I, at the end of the day, I can't judge. I mean, for I can't actually judge when there's weird undertones like that. Like, that's not okay. Yeah. But content wise, like, go for it if it's not hurting anybody. But I think some of those are actually hurting people. <laughs> Note to self. Wait, it one is more the, thing quickly. Oh, oh okay. Let, let you, me just tell everybody. Note to going. self is out I April 18th. This. Let's dish. When you went out to brunch and you saw Beyonce and Jay-Z. Ah, <laughs> uh, hell yeah. How close? How would they smell like? What was your interaction? They were, Did you say hi? They were this close. But, really? Really? We, we were at, like, think restaurant tables. They were, like, maybe, like, less than a foot. Where were you? Um, God, I don't even know. It was the first time I'd ever been to the place. It was in Brentwood. Okay. Some, br some brunch place. I was really hungover, so I really didn't <laughs> want to go to brunch. I didn't want to go to brunch. Such LA thing. But I, I really didn't. I was like, I was like, I just want to stay home and, like, sulk in sadness. 
and wallow. Um, <laughs> just on my couch, like, uh, um, Is that how you spend most Sundays? Yeah, that's how I spend every day. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Take the joke, I'm kidding. <laughs> Jesus. You, you seem Damn. like... No, you seem so much more peachy. That's my joke with my friends, by the way. That's like my... I'm, it's always like, Connor's sad. Like, that's our, in, like, our friend group joke. Um, so it's become like a joke from 12 months ago. But... <laughs> um, he, he, he <laughs> sweats. Um, so Beyonce and Jay Z. I went to the brunch, thank God. And uh, as soon as we got to the counter, the hostess was like, "Oh, aren't you guys lucky?" We're like, "What do you mean?" She's like, "You have the best seat in the whole house. You'll see in ten minutes." So we sit down. Sure enough, ten minutes later, we look at the door. Beyonce, Jay Z, and Blue Ivy walk in wow. and sit like one foot away from us. But. I was trying my hardest to be respectful, not look at them that much, like obviously look at them when they came over, but not stare over, not eavesdrop, nothing. Just treat, it was hard, no, but I was, I was trying go. my best. It, it was not. fine. I actually, I think- Did you be- say something to her? I think because I was hungover, I actually was like slightly numb to it. Okay. <laughs> Dude, what if you were hungover and puked on Beyonce? <laughs> That'd be a great story. I would capitalize on it immediately. Make a video immediately. <laughs> million views, 10 million views. <laughs> Revival. The <laughs> clickbait. Biggest yeah. view. No, I'd feel horrible. Connor vomits on Beyonce and Baby. <laughs> I'd feel. Oh my God. I'd feel horrible. They were so cute. Um, Beyonce and Jay. They were playing Heads Up with Blue Ivy, <gasps> like silently in the corner. It was so, like, so, so precious. Just like any other family. Yeah. It was so, so cute. And that's what. That's why I didn't want. I was like, they're just a family out to eat. I don't want to like stare because no. people were just staring. You can't mess with that. Kind of bad for them in a way. Do you? You <laughs> never want that, or do you? No. I mean, like I. I love the level of notoriety I have at the moment but that, that yeah that to that level it just kind of felt sad and they really felt dehumanized in a way like almost like animals in a zoo people were just watching and taking photos sneakily it was a little bit sad but there's a bubble like I mean I you know I have a few friends who are, are like that like like that and they have a bubble they've built a bubble I think yeah they try to make it and keep it normal as humanly possible but yeah it's like obviously there it's, are it's so not a many, zoo dude yeah and there are so many upsides that you can't like look at it that way that's just part of the gig but the I mean the upsides are like I have a voice in a generation that it's so rare to have a voice 100% and that needs a voice so it's that's the upside do you feel like you use your you utilize your voice I have more correctly? so in the last year and a half than ever before I am um, I'm definitely way more politically aware and involved and engaged um and just for the LGBT community I've tried to kind of voice as much as possible, whether it's my opinion or whether it's on a topic that involves the Trump administration. I just try to be involved or at least spread awareness. And you do a good job. Thank you. A lot further, we must go for the LGBTQ community and a lot of other people. You can't yes. even get the letters right. Uh, <laughs> that could be the community. I'm getting wrapped, dude. <laughs> Connor Franta. A great honor. Thank you. Oh, you're so sweet. Seriously. A, I'm glad I was back. Can well, you can you believe two years ago? Yeah. Not, this, not the same place, but... Right across the street. Right across the street, yeah. Two years ago, and we did a... It was, you did a great interview with us. You yeah, were awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. fun. A lot it of was, coffee talk. Yeah, it was a lot of coffee talk. Well, you had a coffee line coming out at that time. Yeah, did I still, you just I still have, have the coffee line going. It's still out there. It's a monthly subscription service. Jesus. <laughs> Gosh. Look at you. She works. She's a businesswoman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mama's doing her thing. Note to self... Connor Franta's book, and he's going on this incredible book tour mm-hmm. that is uh, unlike anything else I've ever heard of or uh, really able to experience. And I'm looking forward to going in Los yeah, Angeles. Yeah, I'll definitely have to have you. It'll be so fun. And it, it's seriously, it's something that's never been done before. It's an experiential event. It's yeah. all in a semi truck. There's a keynote, there's a meet and greet. You get a book. Yep. yep. Go through a semi, hear me talk. There's going to be some meet me, fun s- stuff. Sweet cool. common culture stuff. Yes, there will be. I'm designing exclusive Ooh. clothing for it. Ooh. Tickets are on sale right now. The book comes out April 18th. Pre-order it. Thanks. Thanks, Connor. Thanks for having me, guys.